Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Eric, if you're new, so uh, feel free to subscribe if you've never been here before, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like. We've kind of come to the end of today's news cycle, uh, and obviously yesterday's, so uh, I'm kind of late to the game on this story, but um, I am kind of glad that I waited because a lot of things changed over the course of it. I'm of course talking about the um, PewDiePie ADL donation controversy. Um, if you're unaware of all of that, uh, PewDiePie is the number one individual YouTube creator on the platform. He just recently hit his 100 million subscriber mark, which is obviously huge. He's uh, only second behind a very large corporation called T-Series. In celebration of that, he did an unboxing video of his uh, customized trophy, basically. And uh, he did uh, uh, an ad for Honey, on it and then just after that he basically said that he was going to make a fifty thousand dollar donation to uh the anti-defamation league now that might not mean much to you maybe it maybe it does honestly i wasn't entirely aware of all the uh, implications of that when i first saw it in fact i i may have skipped the ad the first time i watched it and uh only went back later when i heard something controversial happen and uh so basically um a couple of years ago, PewDiePie went through a lot of controversy where he was really misrepresented by the mainstream media. He made some jokes that um, the mainstream media basically twisted to make him look anti-Semitic, basically. Uh, as a result of that, he ended up losing a deal he had at the time with Disney. And uh, it turns out that the ADL was uh, apparently instrumental uh, in pointing out uh, the controversial things that he had said, uh, quote-unquote controversial. Uh, again, a lot of it was just really taken out of context. And so uh, apparently this is a very regular thing for the ADL. They uh, often will put pressure on uh, organizations to deplatform people. Um, a lot of YouTubers have lost their platform on YouTube because of the ADL. Uh, I should mention another tragic element of this as well. Uh, when the Christchurch shooting happened, the shooter actually shouted out, uh, subscribe to PewDiePie, which was... Um, obviously the campaign PewDiePie was uh, pushing at the time to reach 100 million followers. So obviously that uh, dragged PewDiePie's name through the mud unnecessarily yet again. And so understandably, a lot of uh, independent creators um, took to their cameras and uh, expressed a lot of frustration over this decision by PewDiePie. Um, there were even some uh, conspiracy theories going around that the uh, ADL was basically blackmailing PewDiePie. Um, but that, uh, at least in my mind, never had much credibility or evidence or anything like that. But uh, a couple channels that I uh, watch pretty regularly are Jeremy from The Quartering. He expressed a lot of frustration. The whole thing is disgusting. The ADL exists to basically shake down people that have money and influence through shaming. And uh, the independent uh, journalist Tim Poole, um, he expressed his concern over it. PewDiePie is just being disrespectful. You know what? He doesn't have to do anything for anybody. But maybe maybe I'm wrong in saying that it's kind of offensive that somebody who only got to 100 million because of all these different YouTubers would turn around and give money to the organization that's hurting YouTube. And uh, as a result, PewDiePie actually did put out an initial statement on Twitter that he has since deleted, where, where he basically explained he was trying to bury the hatchet from previous controversies. Apparently, you know, trying to be the bigger man and just giving to an organization that, uh, you know, even attacked him personally. Although I would say, I suppose we'll come back to this later, it's unclear as to how much he knew about the extent of the damage that uh, Anti-Defamation League had done. And so this morning, PewDiePie actually, uh, at the very beginning of his newest Luai video, he came out and said that he was retracting his decision to donate this money to the ADL which uh, was a big relief to uh, a lot of creators, and that included, you know, Jeremy from The Quartering. PewDiePie just announced that he is not donating that money to the ADL. Uh, it included Tim Pool, whose video I watched. Wow. Bravo. I was, uh, I was upset. I was offended. I thought PewDiePie was selling out, and no, he just doesn't understand, I guess. I guess that's, that's kind of uh, fair, but uh, he's going to backtrack. People were really relieved that he had listened to independent creators, that he had not sold out to big corporations. He hadn't sold out to uh, people who might want to, you know, pay him off or anything like that. And so that's sort of where it stands right now. A lot of people are happy. Um, and I just wanted to give a few thoughts uh, on, as to where a lot of this sort of confusion came from. A lot of people see this sort of culture battle that PewDiePie is 
has been involved in in the past and they look at it and they sort of see their own uh political agendas and they and they project it onto onto PewDiePie they project it onto a lot of the things that he's done and some of it there's definitely overlap but some of it I think I, I kind of wanted to point out where I think there might be a disconnect between a Swedish guy like PewDiePie and uh, Americans like me and uh, probably a lot of my viewers um particularly you know maybe uh politically right leaning viewers who um you know have uh, been very invested in the the battle for free speech on the internet and have hoped that YouTube would uh embrace a more uh first amendment friendly kind of environment even though they're a private company that can do what they want as i pointed out PewDiePie's battle has mainly been with the mainstream media over lies that they've told about him right uh, lies that they've told where they basically said that he was engaging what in what they understood to be, you know, hate speech or was encouraging hate speech and things like that, uh, as they define it. And this, of course, relates to a, a controversy from about three months ago with the the conservative commentator, political commentator, Stephen Crowder. Uh, and PewDiePie actually weighed in on this issue when it happened. Um, there was a controversy between Stephen Crowder and uh, Vox. And it ultimately ended up uh, coinciding with when YouTube released a, a lot of uh, new uh, speech guidelines and things like that. But a lot of people would debate over whether they were completely connected. Uh, very possible. And uh, it ultimately ended with Steven Crowder being, his channel being demonetized. And uh, PewDiePie's thoughts on this were really interesting to me. He he did criticize, along with a lot of conservatives, the inconsistent application and un apparently unfair application of YouTube's uh, guidelines. But he did not ultimately criticize the idea of uh, hate speech guidelines. Basically, what this new policy is saying is that they're going to strike harder on hateful content, saying that they're going to remove hateful and supremacist content from YouTube, saying that they're going to prohibit videos alleging that a group is superior in order to justify discrimination and they're going to remove videos denying well-documented violent events and i gotta say i'm all for this this is a good update i don't really have a problem with this great sure remove hateful content i don't care now someone like steven crowder and i'd say a, a lot of conservatives um and people like me would advocate for a much more open platform, although we would condemn a lot of things that uh, people would call hate speech. We would condemn like horrible ideas. We would advocate for the right of those people to speak and allow the marketplace of ideas to battle that out and would encourage a platform like YouTube to keep that as open as possible. But PewDiePie didn't quite tackle it that way. He criticized the inconsistency of YouTube, but he did not express much of an objection to hate speech guidelines. I also noticed this trend earlier on when he was addressing his own controversy. He defended himself against lies like, uh, you know, and uh, talked about what we would call, you know, fake news, things like that, um, and things that were thrown at him. But he did not criticize the idea of people being cracked down on when they did make, you know, hate speech transgressions, as it were. He would say, basically, uh, look, I know that my words can have consequences. And I don't want people to think that Oh, I can I can joke about whatever I want. It just it doesn't have to affect me. I'm PewDiePie. I understand that these things have consequences. And so this isn't to attack PewDiePie, but it is to point out that there I think has been a bit of a disconnect in that we've sort of cheered him on in ways that I think we should, and in controversies that he's gotten into, uh, where he was on the right side of the battle. He was fighting not only for himself against uh, false attacks from the mainstream media. You know, he was representing a lot of other people who've experienced the same thing. And I think a lot of people rightly cheered him on. But we sort of, I think particularly we, more right-leaning uh, First Amendment advocating, like absolute First Amendment advocating uh, conservatives in America, we, we latched onto that. I'm not sure he ever was completely on the same page with that. We sort of read that into PewDiePie's agenda as someone from Sweden who, um, really is used to probably a very different culture surrounding speech. You know, countries like uh, Sweden and uh, Germany, they don't have this codified doctrine of free speech that we hold so dear that I would definitely advocate for. For a why, multitude of reasons. Why is Germany a crappy country? Well, you don't have freedom of speech is one of them. We have freedom of speech. No, you don't. You don't have, have freedom, freedom of speech. Of You're not a freedom. It's 100% accurate. People are arrested in Germany, jailed for speech. No, no. Yes. They're arrested. They're arrested if they use hateful speech. 
don't, because of course they are. Okay, f off. So you want Nazis? Now, certainly not to say that PewDiePie is exactly the enemy of free speech advocates, but it is to say that he may not sense the same kind of urgency that a lot of us uh, uh, Americans would, and I would say rightly would. Um, and there may indeed be uh, a real disconnect there. Uh, it may be leading to a bit of a blind spot for him in regard to how he views and interprets the idea of uh, hate speech guidelines and things like that. And so that's not to throw stones at him, but it is to say just because we want all of our agendas to line up, they may not always, that may not always be the case. And if I'm on the right track here at all, which, you know, I'd be willing to admit I may not be, um, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, uh, but if I am on the right track, I think this would explain a lot of the confusion surrounding the Anti-Defamation League controversy. I think it's possible that PewDiePie looked at the values that the ADL claimed to have very briefly and thought maybe for a while that he shared those values to some extent, but without being fully aware of the consistency of their bully tactics and that he was not an anomaly in the way that they treat people. Basically, I think that uh, he does care about fighting bigotry as a, a more liberal person might understand it. He cares about fighting hate speech uh, as a, uh, a more liberal-leaning person might understand it. As we've talked about already, he does seem open to certain hate speech guidelines and uh, apparently even a, a certain measure of censorship, but perhaps he didn't realize the extent to which the ADL consistently goes to accomplish those things. Uh, and the bully tactics that they consistently utilize. In his eventual retraction video this morning, he did seem to want to communicate some measure of ignorance he had about the nature of this organization. I made the mistake of picking a charity that I was advised instead of a, picking a charity that I'm personally passionate about, which is 100% my fault. Usually when I pick a charity, I take my time, I find a charity that I'm really excited about and actually passionate to donate. To be fair, I saw it as an opportunity to put an end to these alt-right claims that has been thrown against me. It wasn't to try and clear my name or save grace. If it was, I would have done it years ago. But after the Christchurch tragedy, I felt a responsibility to do something about it because it's no longer just about me. It affected other people in a way and I'm not okay with that. I've struggled to figure out how to do that but this was not the right way to go about it. I knew it wasn't perfect, but I also didn't know a lot of things that surfaced throughout this whole thing about the charity that doesn't fit at all. Which at worst, um, maybe downplaying the amount that he knew, which I suppose is human in a situation like this, uh, or like I speculated before, maybe he thought he was the exception to the rule and he wanted to uh, make amends with this company and join hands on something that he thought they agreed with, but they don't. The fact that they came after him was, in fact, a part of a very long-standing pattern with them. Now, that's just speculation, but uh, I think it would explain a lot in that he was trying to make a statement about fighting bigotry. Uh, he was trying to make a statement about fighting anti-Semitism and things he was accused of by giving to someone who even accused him of it, but he didn't realize that it was a part of a massive pattern with them, that it was that they have a massive pattern of bully tactics. They have a massive pattern of misrepresenting people. But in any case, uh, I stand with those who are relieved that he is not giving money to the uh, ADL. And um, I hope that he continues to mature uh, in his views of free speech, if I'm correct in what they even are. Again, this is a, a lot of me just piecing things together and getting a sense of where I think he stands on these things. I think um, I agree with so much of the... Uh, where he has stood in previous controversies. I think he's accomplished a lot of good, and uh, I hope I can continue to have so much overlap with uh, what he's been doing. I just think there are probably areas where particularly uh, you know, right-leaning conservatives like me maybe thought there was a lot more overlap than there really was. There was a lot of it. I still think there's a lot of it, but maybe not as much as we hoped, and hopefully more will come. Um, but you know, it's just a hope, and uh, and it's all of this is based on me just piecing things together as I understand them. Um, if you disagree, that's that's fine. Uh, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments. But um, for now, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and I uh, hope to see you around in the next one. Hopefully, we'll be streaming again soon and doing some fun stuff. So we'll see you around later.